books, and I always have. Um, I am not a naturalist. I'm not even a layman naturalist, but I read books about it because I want to understand what it is I found in the woods or, or you know, that sort of thing. And uh, part of it, too, is just sort of training my eye. Um, when we wander around the woods when we're kids, it's all untrained observation, which often can be far more observant than trained observation. Um, but reading about it and uh, making sure that I've got a reference shelf of, you know, books on, um, uh, you know, the woodland areas, uh, both the, the fauna and the flora, is to help me identify things I spot that I'm not sure what they are, and if I can just get a sense of what they are or what they were, um, I'll pay closer attention to them next time I'm out there. But it primarily comes from uh, Gary Paul observation, going out in the woods, walking around, which is a great thing to do whatever your walk of life. Uh, particularly when the weather's sweet. So, um, but for me, uh, it also comes out of, um, I mean, part of the fun of, of hiking and walking around the woods is just sort of drinking in all these patterns and textures that are out there. Uh, that, that's a big part of the pleasure of it. Okay, and I'm laying in now with a, I'm still using my rough brush, but it is so saturated with ink that it's starting to get its old point back, okay? Um, so now I'm able to go in and do a bit more detail work. Um, it's not going to be as fine as the detail work I'll be able to do with my better brush, but I'm, I'm getting, uh, I'm at a good groove with this brush. Okay, and now I think what I'm going to do is go in with a couple of pen tips. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, the narrower pen tip and then go to the broader G nib. Uh, and what I'm going to focus on is this lower part of the drawing right now. Uh, two reasons I'm focusing on this part. This is going to be the focus of attention, so I don't want to lose myself in detail on the upper part of the drawing right now because that, that is going to be incidental rather than the focus. And the ink is so dry up, I mean so wet up here that I will smear, smear it badly <laughs> if I try to do anything up there. So I'm going to focus down here right now. Now, all kinds of textures in nature. Um, I, I started by banging in the obvious ones, but uh, the forms that you're usually going to find on the surface of these kind of areas tend to be things like uh, fungus, mushrooms, um, uh, fallen branches, leaves, and so on. So I'm going to lay those in first with my pen, uh, not in any great detail, but just as sort of a benchmark to myself of don't clutter this area, don't lose, you know, doing something here. Uh, there is a type of mushroom that grows uh, in parts of Vermont that has this weird kind of honeycomb shape to it. Uh, it's actually the gills of the mushroom, um, which usually in standard mushrooms are underneath the cap. They're sort of exposed, so they look like sponges. I want to get a couple of those in, and then I want to get a couple of traditional mushroom shapes in. And I'm drawing the caps. And again, these are just markers to myself right now. Uh, OK, uh, down here I've got some roots. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time with texture on those. So what I'm going to do is I'm working with, and I'm trying to draw with my wrist rather than with my fingers at this stage so that these lines all go in a single direction. And I'm dropping them into these roots into the shadows. And you can see with this pen tip, I can spread it really wide and get some thick lines. I can go really fine. Depends how much weight I put on the tip, how much pressure I'm putting on the stroke of the pen. But I'm getting what I want here. OK. And I want this to be a little lighter into here. All right, now I want to start getting into the moss textures. And because I'm going to do the lower moss textures with my better brush, I'm just going to focus on what's happening up around these roots right now. And this is where I'll work with my pen. And as I've said before, it's all about, I'm not, it's not like I'm drawing moss. I, I'm not worried about the detail of moss. I'm just loosely creating a different texture form than exists anywhere else on the drawing. 
And I'm not going to worry if I get blobs of ink that just becomes part of the texture. Again, it's not about control per se. The control that I'm applying is where I choose to place these textures, but I'm giving myself plenty, plenty of room for play and sort of enjoying how the accidents shape the piece. There's a certain zen to it, if you will, not to be pretentious. Okay, we got a whole clutch of like club moss in through here. Everybody knows what club moss is? No, club moss. Uh, here's a piece of cake. Right. Club moss is what you'll find if you looked really close at it. Uh, it's called club moss because it tends to be a narrow furry stalk like this. And the top of the, each individual shoot looks like almost like a little Christmas tree. It's a little block of moss. And, you'll, and when there's a carpet of this stuff, club moss is incredibly soft and luxuriant to walk around barefoot on. And, um, but this is what you're finding when you look really closely at it. They look like little, you know, vague Christmas trees, sort of. Uh, ground pine uh, is different. Ground pine will have um, shoots that come up like this. It tends to grow at the top up this way. This stuff has all sorts of nice little vegetative hairs on it. And ground pine will spread with underground uh, growths that are like root systems, and it'll spring up a brand new outgrowth over here. Ground pine can spread over a huge area um, really quickly. <laughs> this stuff takes off. Once the spring hits and the snow is melted, th this stuff just takes off. Okay, that's my little crash course. Um, so those are the kind of textures. So I'm not going to worry about drawing the individual, you know, clubs and so on, but if I just create a pattern that looks like soft moss and that kind of you know, form at the top of some of them, it'll have that, that feel that I'm looking for. Now, uh, you will not, you do not have to worry much about um, drawing the detail of this kind of thing, particularly with a, a, a scene like this where the trees are so large, but you do want to make sure and get the texture. And that's what I'm working on here with this uh, smaller nib. And I'll get a different texture once I start going in with the G nib. Uh, what I'm creating here is the look of, this is like a huge old tree root that's so overgrown with moss that you can't even see the root underneath anymore. It just looks like a, a clutch of moss coming up. Ooh, that was a big blob of ink that came off there. Now it's time for the delicate, wonderful washcloth that I was loaned. <laughs> there we go. I just want to spin, sponge up the excess ink. And I better not put it on that CATV table. OK, is all this uh, making sense? Let's get into the birch tree. All right, I'm going to draw the edge of this tree with the pen. Uh, when you're doing trees, one thing you got to stick to, they are always thicker on the bottom than they are on the top. So make sure whatever lines you're laying down that you're not creating the pattern that goes in the opposite. You don't want to have a trunk that's thick at the bottom.